This is Bishop Ron C. Hill, and I'm blessed to be the pastor of the Love uh, and uh, Unity Church of God in Christ, right, right here in the city of Compton, California. And I want to thank and praise God that I've been on the road a long time, seen a lot, heard a lot, and I've observed God do great things in and through my life and through the ministry. I want to say to you today that it is God's will for you to be saved, sanctified, and baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. It's God's will for you to be full of and led by Holy Ghost. It's God's will that you be full of the Logos, the written word, and that your life would be led by Holy Ghost. God is wanting you to operate on this planet as the salt of the earth and as the light of the world. God is wanting his anointing to so fill your life that you can go throughout this, the, the world and, 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 and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's God's will for you to be healed in your emotions. It's God's will for you to be full of faith, full of hope, and full of love. It's God's will for you to overcome every attack that the enemy brings against you, whether it's domestic problems, financial issues, uh, emotional issues, or whatever the case might be, by faith, you can overcome any and all issues that are come against your life. And God can heal your body of any ailment. All things are possible to them that believe. But we need more people in the church who will speak like this and who would believe this and get before God and put a demand on his word and tell God this is what he has promised us. We have too much sickness in the church. We have too many people who are mentally distraught in the church and it's simply too much uh, 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 poverty in the church. Too many people getting divorces in the church. Too many people who are going through the, the portals of the church who are suffering from the same problems that the people are suffering from in the world. It should not be. Our lives should reflect the fact that we are indwelt by the spirit of the creator of the universe. Our lives should reflect that, that we're no longer sinners, that we've been redeemed from sin, that we have been born of the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost, and that we're in this earth to represent the causes of Christ. May I tell you that it is God's will that you function as the light of the world and the salt of the earth, and God is wanting you to have the spiritual capacity to take authority over Satan and to take authority over sin by trusting in the power of the word of God. God. God never intended for Satan to be your boss. And he never intended for, for the flesh to rule you. God wants you to live a supernatural existence. And that's exactly what's available to you. And I believe that there are people today who's uh, watching my face and listening to my, the words coming out of my mouth today. You know God has already revealed these things to you. You know that you should be further along than you are. And, and many of you, your problem is you've been sitting around dumb preachers. Pre when I say dumb preachers, please trust me, I'm not here to put any preacher down. I love preachers. But some preachers are ignorant. Some preachers do not know how to plug into the power of God. They are good preachers. They, they get a text and they read a few verses and they close the book and start doing a lot of yelling and they get people all emotional. But at the end of the day, they walk out of that place just as bound and sick in the mind as they were before they heard that preacher. The word of God, the gospel, is about deliverance. It, you, you, God sets you free. The moment you believe the gospel and the moment you repent of your sins and accept Christ as your savior, through the word of God, through the blood of God, through the Holy Ghost, you can walk victorious on this planet, representing the causes of Christ. And you're not on this planet as a Christian to get rich or to be famous or to enjoy the life of this planet. 
Your life does not come from anything in this planet except Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You can't find life in, in anything physical. It doesn't matter what kind of physical uh, activities that you are participating in. It can't bring you life. You can't find life in, in food and materialism and, 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 and money and diamonds and rubies and, and being uh, popular in, in the political arena. That doesn't bring you life. Life is in the spiritual world. Life does not come from outside in. Life comes from inside out. For you, dear brother and sister, life is in the spirit. It isn't anything physical. It isn't anything materialistic. It, listen, if you could buy life with money, all of the rich people would be laughing all day and the poor people would be crying all day. But on this planet, you need to know, now, now America is a rich planet uh, economically and materialistically, but there are, planet, there, there are people on this planet in other countries who don't have as much as we have here, and many of them are living a much higher quality of life than we are here because many of them have, have met Jesus. They have been born again. They've been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And they know how to walk this word. And they may not have as much materialistically as we do in America, but they have real life. Because again, life cannot come from anything physical. I don't care how handsome he is or how beautiful she is, that human being cannot bring you life. I don't care how much you pay for your automobile. It doesn't matter whether you live in a penthouse or an outhouse. It doesn't matter, friends. It cannot bring you life. And you may be an important athlete. You may be an important actor, an entertainer. Everybody may be applauding your name. But you know that something is missing in your life. Anybody who does not know God through Christ Jesus and his blood, they know that something is missing. They may think they need more money, or they need another wife, or they need another husband, or they need sex, or they need some food, or they need to take a trip to Dubai. They need to go around the world. But nothing, absolutely nothing, can satisfy the inner hearts of a man except the presence of God. The old preacher used to say 40, 50 years ago that there is a God-shaped vacuum in everybody's heart that can only be filled by God. You can't fill it with anything else. You can't fill it with sexual uh, experiences. You can't fill it with drugs. You can't fill it with alcohol. You can't fill it with being important. It can only be filled by God. And then once you get there, then you're ready to be taught, friends. But if you think you can find life independent of God, you are sadly mistaken, and many people standing behind pulpits today, they think, oh, if I could get a big offering, that's it. Brother, you get all the offerings you want, it ain't going to change you. Money is not going to change you. Money will only magnify who you are. And if you are a stinker broke, you're going to be a bigger stinker when you get money. It's not, it's not the money. It's whether or not you have been redeemed. It's whether or not you've been born again. It's whether or not... You've been taken out of the first man, Adam, and transitioned into Christ, the second man. That's where life is. You must be born again. You, you have to be regenerated. you got to be able to see God in the spirit. And then you're ready to use your faith to conquer the lust of the flesh, to conquer the lust of the eyes, and to conquer the pride of life. You can live holy, and you can walk in the love of God. You can so walk with God to the degree where what other people think about you, say about you, or even do to you can't touch you, can't cause you to become bitter, can't cause you to have a reactionary of, of trying to retaliate against people. The, the devil can't use his people to take your joy, no matter what they're thinking about you, no matter what they're saying and doing to you. You belong to God, and God will cover you with the blood of Jesus. God will surround you with the angels of God, and he'll put his hands of favor and protection upon you, and they can't find you, and they may be hating on you, but you're loving everybody because you've been born again. Praise! I got to get into the word, of God, but I'm just trying to exhort somebody to know this Christianity stuff is real. Jesus Christ is Lord. 
He did die. He was in the tomb for three days. He was raised from the dead on the third day. He did go back to heaven. He did send the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. And the word of God is true. It works in the life of a person. But you got to get into it and trust it and obey it in order for it to work for you. The word of God is nothing but a dead book until you believe it. Once you believe it, once you believe it in your heart and speak it out of your mouth and act on it, it releases God in your life. I know it's true. And somebody said, how do you know, preacher? It happened to me. Praise God. Let me read some scriptures to you. I'm reading from Ephesians chapter 1, putting in it verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. We bless and glorify God because God has blessed us. Aren't you glad to be saved today? Am I talking to anybody today who can say, I'm glad to be saved in a day like today? I'm glad to say I know God for myself. I don't need anybody to write another book. Thank God for you authors that write books. But I have the book. I have the book. And I want to encourage you to get full of the book. So you can find out what God has to say to you. And, and by the way, by the way, thank God for all these books that these preachers are writing. But at the end of the day, they can't write a book. No man on this planet can write a book that would introduce you to God. They can tell you about God, but no man, hear me, no man on this planet can write a book that would introduce you to God. The only one who can introduce you to God is Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is the one only entity or person in the earth today who can reveal who Jesus is. I don't care how many books you read and, and your, 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 your wall can be lined with books, but you can't meet God. You can't meet God except the Holy Ghost introduce you to God. You can't even repent of your sins without the Holy Ghost showing you how ugly you are in sin. You can't come to Jesus except the Holy Ghost draw you. Glory to God, brother. And if Jesus revealed to you that you were a sinner through the Holy Ghost, and if the Holy Ghost revealed to you that Jesus Christ suffered and bled and died on the cross of your sins, and if the Holy Ghost and the Word of God reveals to you that that same Jesus arose from the dead on the third day, and if you believe it, and if you have repented of your sins, and if you have accepted Christ as your Savior, you are a new creature in Christ. And now, brother, now, sister, all you need to do now is pray on through to the baptism in the Holy Ghost, get full of the Word of God, and walk that Word. And God will be with you every step of the way. Note here in verse number four. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. I am holy and blame free. I'm holy and blameless today. And you, if, if, you, if you're truly born again, so are you. I'm not guilty for anything I did before I got saved. And I don't feel guilty about anything I've done since I've been saved. The blood of Jesus has washed all of my sins away. And I want to thank and praise God that I serve a forgiving Father. Hallelujah to God. Aren't you glad that we serve a merciful Father who will have mercy on you? The mercy of God, the, the application is this. You did wrong and you deserve judgment. But God had mercy on you. Aren't you glad that God had mercy on you? Grace gives you something that you don't deserve. And grace will enable you to walk this word. But mercy says that God's going to give you a pass. Thank God for giving me a pass. It doesn't matter what anybody, oh, I heard Ron Hill did this. Oh, I heard he did. I don't care what you heard. All of my sins are under the blood, and God is having mercy on me right now, and his grace is enabling me to walk this word. I'm blameless and holy. I'm holy and blameless, just like the word says. And, 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 and hey, brother, hey, so, so listen, if you're born again, so are you. 
So are you, this is what the word says. Don't go by how you feel. Don't go by what the devil and his people are telling you. Agree with the word of God. I'm going to read, I'm going to read, this is for me this time. This is for me this time. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. It was his will to make me holy. It was his will for me to be blameless. I'm holy and blameless because of the blood. The blood of Jesus has completely satisfied the God of the universe, the Father of all. <laughs> That blood, that blood that was shed on the cross. Oh, I love the gospel people because the gospel says that when Jesus hung on that cross, all of the wrath that God had for the sinner, he put that wrath on his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, those of us who are truly born again, we will not receive the wrath of God. The wrath of God is going to go on sinners out there who have not been born again. But my sins have already been judged. My sins and all believers' sins were judged on the cross, and you will not be judged for them again. Hallelujah to God. You are free from sin. You are dead to sin, and you are holy and blameless before God. And I can hear somebody say, oh, but you know, brother preacher, I got all these problems, and I got this. You know why you got them? Because you believe you have them, and you said you have them, and they got you in your head. But if you're truly born again, you have, everything you said about yourself that does not agree with the word of God is a lie. And you got that lie from nobody but the devil. Satan does not want you to know that you are free from sin. You study Romans 6 and you'll find out that you are free from sin and you are dead to sin, but alive under God through Jesus Christ the Lord. But you got to believe it and speak. Speak it and then defend it. Note here in, in, in verse number six. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. We give praise to the glory of the grace of God when we accept the fact that we have been accepted in the beloved. You're not going to go up into the beloved with sin in you. How do you think you're going to go to heaven with sin in you? There won't be no sinners in heaven. Everybody who goes into heaven, they're holding free from sin. As a matter of fact, in the spiritual world, every believer, listen, every believer is in Christ right now. And wherever he is, you are. Whatever he is, you are. In fact, you are seated in heavenly places in Christ right now with perfect salvation. Not one blemish is in your salvation because it was purchased by the pure holy blood of Jesus. When are you church people going to stop running around here thinking that you are going to be pleasing before God through some effort of yours? Through how you dress and oh you don't ever smoke and, and you don't drink and you don't lie and you, you good, good, good. You shouldn't do those things. You shouldn't go around here getting drunk. You should go around here getting high. You should go around here smoking, whatever. But that doesn't save you. All that does is prove that you are saved. Saved people all the live saved. But living saved doesn't save you. I'm going to try that again. Saved people all the live saved. But living saved doesn't save you. When I first got saved, I had set up under some erroneous doctrine, and they had me messed up. But I, God knew my heart. I got hired to be a chaplain on Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles for 40 hours a week for four or five years, 40 hours a week. I preached the gospel 30 and 40 times a day to individuals, 30, 40 times a day. I never shall forget. I can see the man's face now. This white man came into my office, and as my custom was, I began to preach Christ's gospel. And when I began to preach Christ's gospel to him, his tears began to flood, tears began to flood down his face. And he had been sleeping out in the dirt somewhere. And the tears were making mud, as it were, when it was coming down his face. He was weeping before God because he was being regenerated. And while I observed that man, Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, Ron, 
in the same way you're telling this man that he can only be saved by grace, the same thing goes for you. Just because you don't do the things you used to do is not saving you. You're only saved by grace. Yes, you should seek to live right with all that's in you. Do the best you can to live right with the full understanding that you're going to make mistakes like anybody else. There's no bishop. There's no apostle. There's no preacher in the body of Christ who can tell you that they've never made a mistake. If they tell you that, they are liars. We all have had some kind of a mistake. Maybe you didn't do what I did, and maybe I didn't do what you did, but we've all had some kind of a failure since we've been saved. But God began to say to me, you're not saved because you're good. You're saved because I'm good. you saved because I put your sin nature on my son. And my son Jesus paid for the sins. You see, friends, people don't go to heaven because they live right. They go to heaven because they believe right. It's the fact that you believe this gospel is the reason why you get to heaven. People don't go to hell because they do bad things. They go to hell because of the nature that they're in. Adam put them in a sinful, dark nature. This is the reason they had to be born again, to get out of that nature, nature and get transitioned into the nature of Christ. And then once you get into that nature, then a hey brother, a hey sister, you need to learn how to get full of the word of God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Read the Bible, study the Bible, memorize the Bible, meditate in the Bible, try to OD on the Bible. And as a born again person, after you get born again, get into the word and begin to petition God and remind him of what he promised. Uh, listen, listen here in, in the book of Joel, in the book of Joel chapter 2, verse number 28. Joel Chapter 2, verse number 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Verse 29. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens, in those days will I pour out of my spirit. So God said, listen, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon men and women. They both going to preach. You, you, you people need to leave these women alone talking about a woman can't preach. If a woman couldn't preach, then the promise of the Holy Ghost for her would never have been given. Every woman can get anointed to preach like any man. Don't let these, I don't know what's wrong with these men. I have no words for them. But if I was a woman and God has anointed me to preach, I'd go out there and win all the souls I could win. And don't, don't be worried about what these guys say. They're not running nothing. It's what the Word of God says. He's going to pour out his spirit on his handmaiden, and a handmaiden is a woman. But let me move on from that. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. The Bible is clear that God wants to baptize the believer in the Holy Ghost. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You study the book of Acts chapter 1, and you'll find that Jesus spent 40 days with them after he had been raised from the dead. He spent 40 days with those apostles confirming to them that he had been raised from the dead. Once they got truly confirmed in their hearts that Jesus had been raised from the dead, then he told them to go wait for the promise to wait for the promise that God had given. What was the promise? The promise of the power of the Holy Ghost. Many people in the church are claiming to be born again, but they have not gone to receive what God promised. It is a promise from God for the believer to be baptized and filled with Holy Ghost. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Because once you truly get born again, that means you get born of the Spirit, and then you go after the baptism and power of the Holy Ghost, and you couple that with the Word of God. I guarantee you, brother and sister, that your life will take on a brand new flavor. And, and I would urge you to know, walk in the Word. Walk in the Word. A lot of people are spooky, if you, if you ask me, because a lot of people are always trying to jerk around and, and, act, and act as if... Um, they are all spiritual when, when they're not because uh, uh, they don't spend enough time uh, in, in the Word of God. 
You note here in, in the book of James, excuse me, the book of 1 John uh, chapter 5, and, and we're going to put in at, at verse number four, at verse number 11. And this is a record that God has given unto us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. And he that has the Son has life, and he that have not the Son have not life. You need to know that you have life. You have life, and you have it in the Son. Now that you have that life, the Bible says that there are three that bear record in heaven. The blood, the Holy Ghost, and the Word of God. The Word of God and the Holy Ghost operates in tandem. Let me challenge you today to get full of the Word of God and simply seek to obey it with all of your heart. Obey the Logos. If you fail during the day and you do something to violate the principles that are embodied in the, in the Logos, confess it. Ask God to forgive you for violating the Word. And the next day, don't violate it in the same way. Walk the Word. Walk the Word. Obey the Word. And anybody who obeys the Word, they'll get baptized and filled with Holy Ghost. If you obey the Word of God, according to the Scriptures, God will baptize you in the Holy Ghost. But once you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, on this planet, treat people the way the, Bible, the Word of God told you to. Treat your own life the way the Word of God told you to. Interface with God and other people the way the Word of God told you to. And if you continuously do the Logos, at some point, a rhema word is going to come. A rhema word is a Holy Ghost word. God wants you to walk the Word with the assistance of the Holy Ghost and when he has specific instructions for you, he'll give it to you in the power of the Holy Ghost. And you can live victorious in every genre of, well, listen, friend, I see my time is out. But friends, listen, you need to get a copy of the last two broadcasts. You need to do that because it will help you in your walk with God. Uh, these two teachings is focusing upon the power of the Holy Ghost. You should get the, a copy of these two, minutes, the two teachings and it will be a blessing to your life. Get on the phone, call that number, let them know that you'd like to get those teachings, and God will bless you. And also, please consider becoming a supporter of the ministry. I love you. Next time. Consider financially supporting Food for Your Soul television broadcasts. Together, we can change lives. Your support will allow us to reach the world with the good news that Jesus saves. You can give online at loveandunity.org. Click the Give button and it will take you to our secure page where you'll have the option to give by credit card, debit card, or bank account. You can set up a one-time or reoccurring gift by linking your preferred payment method. You can also text a gift by texting the amount you desire to 310-507-1181 or mail to P.O. Box 5449 Compton, California, 90224. Thank you in advance for your support.